Yeah. Up next, a review of 8 Bit Box from Yellow. As I then close the notes. All right. Full disclosure, I brought home a review copy of the 8-Bit Box from the Yellow booth at Origins 2019. Uh, the 8-Bit Box is a gaming system. It was designed by Frank Critton and Gregory Ligari, or Largi, sorry, I apologize for mispronouncing the name. It features art from Jean-Baptiste Reynaud and was published by Yellow in 2018. Now, this is true for the base game, as well as the three games that are included with the original game box. Despite the fact that it's one of the first videos we ever recorded, our 8-Bit Box unboxing video is still one of the best ways to see what you get with a copy of 8-Bit Box. Uh, now, I'm not going to go into detail about all the bits and everything you get here. Uh, you can see that on the video or just check out the blog version of this review where I do detail all the different components. What I will say here is that I was overall impressed by the quality here, especially the player controllers, like the, the player pieces. The, the I want to say player boards, but they're not boards. They're shaped like controllers. They are well-designed, look like actual video game controllers, and they work perfectly during gameplay. And while I haven't played the game a ton of times, they seem sturdy enough to stand up to repeated use. So you call this a gaming system. What does it mean by that? All right, so similar to the way the Nintendo Entertainment System is a tool to play various different video games, this is a tool to play various different board games. Now, the game comes with a range of different components, enough components for up to six players that are meant to be used by all of the various eight book box games. And some components are going to be used in some and some aren't in others. Now, three of the games that come with this, three games come with this original box, and they, each individual game, also has some of its own components as well that you're going to mix with the stuff in the core set. And there are other games that will be able to be bought separately, in theory at least, because right now, Yo has released one other game. So there are a grand total of four different games that can be played with this system. Now, each individual game, they call them cartridges, which I thought was cute, and the boxes look kind of like a Super Nintendo game. So each individual cartridge will have additional components and rules on how to play that game using the components from the base game in it. Now, well, the components are shared, the actual gameplay is completely different in each of the various different games. So how about you tell us with the, about the three different games you get with the core yep. box, starting with Pixoid. All right, Pixoid, uh, as soon as you see this, you're instantly gonna know what license they're, they're borrowing from, and that is Pac-Man. Um, this... Shaving the serial numbers off of? Yes, yes saving the serial numbers off poorly, I will say. Uh, this plays three or four players in about 50 minutes, so super quick game. Now, the board is called the circuit board, and the players are playing viruses, but the board just looks like a maze with a bunch of dots on it, and while well, the viruses kind of look like ghosts, and they are trying to catch Pixoid, or Pac-Man, or, yeah, Pixoid in this case. Anyway, so each round, uh, a different person is going to take on the role of Pac-Man, Pixoid. You're going to play a different person. They're going to move around the circuit board, trying to collect white cubes and survive as long as they can. The other players are going to play the viruses, trying to catch Pixoid. Now, Pixoid's going to get one point per round they survive with bonus points for the cubes they're able to pick up as they move around the map. Now, after each player's had a turn playing Pixoid, the game ends. The player who's got the most points wins. Uh, this is a dead simple game. All you are doing on your controller is programming two things. Are you moving up, down, left, or right? And how far are you moving? Up, down, rest, or right? That's it. Everyone does that simultaneously. Once everyone's ready, you flip it up and then just do it on the board. If Pixoid gets caught, round's over. Otherwise, just keep going until someone catches that little Pixoid guy. All right, well, simple enough. But it sounds like you probably need more than just two players to really make this one interesting. After all, it took three ghosts to make Pac-Man interesting. Yeah, this one literally says three or four players. Doesn't even recommend playing it at three. What's interesting is um, this, actually, possibly many of these games might actually fall under our earlier topic of tonight's show. Which I was just thinking about while describing Pixoid, as long as everyone had their own set of white cubes. Now, as for the game itself, it's dead simple. Uh, it's really simple to set up. It's simple to play. Everyone gets it. Like, as soon as you set up the map, people are like, oh, I'm on board. I know what this is. This, this is Pac-Man. Uh, it's a quick, fun distraction. I do find, though, it's way too short. Like, 15 minutes is pushing it. 
It really doesn't take that long. What I actually recommend to make the game a little more interesting, especially because you can have a bad round in this, is give everyone two or three turns. And I got to say, to me, that actually makes it feel more like the actual game where everyone would have three lives. And the other thing I would do is change up the starting spots because normally the starting spots are, are delegated by player color, but just mix them up because the boards are actually different. So just switch them like everyone rotate clockwise just to make it a little more interesting. Yeah, I think, well, this system suffered from, if anything, a lack of focus on how long it games should, how long its game should go, how, what, what the system is going to be used for. Yeah. Um, and so that was Pixoid. Now, how about you tell us about Outspeed next? I've played this one. Yeah. So Outspeed pays three to six players. Uh, this one, you're looking at 30 minutes ish, really depending on the number of players and the amount of talking. Now, this is an attempt to capture the feel of multi-battle racing, multiplayer racing games where there's attacking the other players, battling racing games. Uh, Mario Kart, of course, would be the most famous nowadays. So this game seems to be based on an older SNES series called the F-Zero series. Just has a sci-fi look to it, but it's the same kind of game where you're racing and using power-ups to attack each other. Uh, you start by putting out two boards that represent the track, and then you make a deck of um a tiles that also okay so the boards re represents player position the deck represents the options in the track or what's in the track and you're going to shuffle that and make a deck now each player is going to pick a color uh put together the little car and put it on the track or sorry car racer whatever they look sci-fi and you're also going to grab a number of white cubes which is your fuel you flip the top card of the deck and that's when the game begins now, this is really unique, and I, I can't compare this to any other game because what it does is each tile is going to show you three potential paths and the penalties and rewards for taking each path. The paths are labeled A, B, C. The rewards are usually power-ups or moving along the board, getting ahead in the race. And the penalties are usually spending fuel. Now, what's really well done is that the rewards and penalties for some of the paths are going to be based on how many players take one of the other paths, or some of the paths only allow so many players. So path A might say only two people can go down here, whereas path C might say five people can go down there. And if more than that go through, no one moves. And the other thing is you'll th have like path A will only move you up two spots, but you're gonna get X fuel, and X fuel is equal to the number of players that went down path C, where path C is awesome because it moves you five ahead, it only costs one fuel, but if you take a lot of C, you're actually helping the people, okay, right? You kind of get how that interacts. So what players are gonna do is secretly program their path. So all you're doing on your controller is setting it to A, B, or C, that's it. Uh, once everyone's picked, you flip it up and then you re-evaluate it. Now the funky part that it seems odd and I think everyone I've showed it to is, to be honest, slightly disappointed with, is the board. Because the board does nothing except show relative position. It could literally be a sheet of lined paper with lines on it to track where everyone is. Um, obstacles, artwork, all of that doesn't matter. Now, there are two boards, which does matter, because once a player goes off the top of the one board, you take the board that's in the back. All the players that are on that are eliminated from the game, and you put it back to the front so that the board just keeps rolling. Now, play keeps going until you get to the finish line tile. I think it's 12 tiles in. I'm, I might buy 15. You then resolve that final tile, and then whoever's furthest on the board wins. If there's anyone tied, it's whoever has the most fuel left. Now, <clears throat> this last bit, if player runs out of fuel before the end of the race, they also lose. And yes. that combined with the dropping off of the, back of the back of the map is really the biggest problem with this game. Player elimination is something none of us really, you know, support yeah. much well in this game. Although I don't tend to mind it in short games. So as long as you're not having that 45-minute game of speed, you're going to play in 15 minutes, it's not that bad. So overall, I, I would the, the thing that blows me away about this game is you are taking what's a very reflexes, reflex-based, hand-eye coordination style of video game, heavy dexterity game, and turning it into basically a social deduction game. Because winning in outspeed is all about reading your opponents and trying to predict what path they're going to take. And to be honest, it's really good if people are talking. So if people are trash talking or working together, hey, if we both take A, we're both going to take A. All right, you're good. We're both going to take A. And then the stabbing in the back where it's, no, I actually took C because I get a bonus if you take A, right? That whole interaction, the, the discussing which path you're going to take. And I find it works 
if you're playing silent, which I've done that, I sat down, played a game of Outspeed where no one just talked, they programmed the thing and played, it worked. But really shines when there's that whole cooperation and deception and, and social interaction of the game. My only complaint, though, is the track. Like, it, it's, to be honest, dumb. Like, I want the art on there to matter. Since it doesn't matter, it should feature less artwork or have just a bland, I don't know, desert picture. Instead, there's like a jump on it. And if you're going to put a jump on a, a jump ramp on a board, I better be able to use the jump ramp. Like, no, like, come on, I'm playing a racing game. There's a jump ramp on the board. Let me use the jump ramp. Or there's, there's rubble. Let me dodge the rubble or something. Yeah, this I completely agree. The art's irrelevant. And that's a big disappointment when you've got what is actually a really good looking board and the memory of these games being obstacles to dodge. Yes. That's what these games were. And if you're trying to give us that feel of that game, you're failing really badly at it. Yeah. Like, like uh, it just totally, and like, if it wasn't there, if it was just, uh, uh, I don't know, I don't know what I put on for artwork, but something with some nice thick lines that say one through 12 on them and another one, and that was it. And it just so relative position, I'd be like, all right, sure. Now you got to try this last time you were down. Uh, it was only a three-player game with Deanna, and she got eliminated early. So what'd you think of it for the, the one play? Well, well, again, this box, uh, everything about this system is really great quality. Uh, yeah. It suffers from low player count. Um, it's a party game. And if you're going to have a party game, you need a group party to play it with. Um, so that was Outspeed. Now, yep. the final game in the box is Stadium. Yes. So this is a team-based game, uh, four to six players, that takes about 45 minutes. So this is the longest one. I'd say it would go up to an hour. The, the one game we played definitely went over an hour. And that's going to be dependent on how many people you have, how much trash talking there is, how much interaction. Now, this is trying to be your sports-based video games, the old epics games, track and field, summer Olympics, winter Olympics, or winter games, sorry, summer games, specifically summer games in this case, or track and field. That whole two-button masher, left and right on your joystick, running games and jump and play through multiple different events and try to win medals. So we have the super quick Pixoid, yep. Pixoid the longer outspeed, and now the mm -hmm. comparatively lengthy Stadium. Very true. And it's a, a, what I like is they did a good job of showing off the different capabilities of the system by this. Now, stadium, you're going to first determine which events are in your, in your whatever it is, Olympics or whatever you're playing through, track and field, whatever it is. And you use those, you build a board, which looks like a big track and field track. Um, you're going to pick teams. So there's a red team and a blue team. Uh, you're going to pick a character. Uh, the characters are mechanically identical, but they technically have background and different artwork. So not much, uh, no, none of our much loved asymmetry here. No. But again, very much a party feature. You don't want you want a quick setup, to, or you you don't want a quick setup game to suffer when you have too many choices. Uh, you know, setting it up. So you you yeah, want it to this, be quick and easy. This, this is pick the character that looks coolest to you. Now you're going to play through ten rounds. Each round is going to be a different event. Now each event is its own mini game that's going to involve one or more members of each team. Some events are just the person whose turn it is and other events are the entire team. Now, every event is different, but there is some overall rules for the game, some over some commonalities. Uh, first of all, your goal is to win medals, gold, silver, or bronze. Now, some, the team's just going to win a medal. So with two teams, someone's going to get silver, or silver, someone's going to get gold. But other events, individual players can win medals. So you can actually have it where one team wins two, another one, one team sweeps, and so on. Now, the overall goal of the game is to have the most valuable medals at the end, and there's a little scoring track to do that math to figure out. I don't remember how it works. Obviously, the player with the most golds might win, but if you have more silvers than the team with the most golds, you may win out based on points. Now, in addition to earning medals, every event is going to cost energy. Now, every character has their own energy pool, and it's something you each individually track, and you manage your own character's energy throughout the game. Uh, most events are going to cost energy just to take part. So it's like, hey, we've gotten to the sumo match. Who wants to take part? You all have to spend so much energy to take part. And then while playing, there's often, almost every event has some way to spend more energy. So if you're in the sumo event, you might be able to re-roll a die by spending energy, or you might get plus two on your dice, or you might get to do something extra. And that is what the entire game ends up about, because the it, it's all about your energy. It's all about maintaining your energy. Because if a character runs out of energy, for one, they may not be able to enter certain events, and other chances, they're probably going to be able to enter events and do poorly. Now, as for the individual events, um, 
there are a ton of different events. They all play completely different. They make full use of the various components of the 8-bit box. Uh, some involve hitting hidden, de um, hidden decisions. Many of them invite dice rolls, lots of ways to spend energy. Like this really takes, uses a lot of the components in the 8-bit box system. Well, you mentioned running out of energy. Is there as much player elimination as outspeed or are you never fully out of the game? No, on this one, like I said, there'll be certain events you may not be able to join. Like, you have to pay an energy cost to join. If you have no energy, you can't. From what I remember, you you can't be eliminated fully. So, like, one of the events is fencing, and it's, you spend, you get, you start with a, the white die, and for every additional point you spend, you get to add additional dice. Well, you'd be stuck with just the white die, which you're probably not going to contribute much for your team, but you can still play. Now, of the three games that came with the core set, this is definitely the most involved. Um, it best uses the components that come with the 8-bit box. Uh, there is a ton of variety over the various sporting event mini games, some which are more complicated than others. Some are also more fun than others, but I didn't like hate any of them. There were definitely ones that I enjoyed more than others. Um, the thing this is really about, though, is the teamwork and managing your characters and your team's energy. Who's going to take part in what event? How much energy to spend is going to be the key to winning each individual event. But then the other thing is deciding which events you want to try hard on and which ones you might just not try so hard and plan to lose so you can save your energy for later events. At the same time, you've got to be reading the other team to try to figure out what they're doing, right? If you think they're going to throw the javelin, that might be the one you want to spend a little energy on to make sure you get the gold, right? Um, it, it, there's a, I don't know, it's a neat thought process, uh, the, the whole trying to maintain that energy level and make sure you can make it to the end of the event and not blow it all in one event. What I like about this one is it really highlights the versatility of the 8-bit box. And like there's some that use just dice, there's some that use the controller, there's some that use dice in the controller, some that use the cubes. Like it really takes advantage of all the different things. Plus overall, I found this one to be the most rewarding of the three games. It felt less ephemeral, it felt less of a party game and more of, like my, it felt more like my decisions mattered. All right, well, that was Stadium, the last of the games that come with the 8-bit box. We know your thoughts on the individual games. What did you think about the 8-bit box as a whole? All right, first off, I got to say I love the concept. Like, when I saw this thing, I was like, oh, my God, that's amazing. It's a board game trying to emulate the look and feel of retro video games. And you know what? It does that. It does a great job of that. The three games, including the core game, each try to capture a different feel of widely different video games, and they all manage to do it. They all feel like it. Even the fact that Outspeed is a social deduction game, it feels like the choices you make while playing those games. Do I take the shortcut? Do I not? Do I save my power up? Do I not? Like, it's all there. I think the design here is brilliant. The, the work that went into building this thing, designing this thing is great, both physically and mechanically. Like, I, the physically, I love those controllers. They are so nice. And I like the way the individual games are in their own little boxes, and they look like video game boxes. I even like that they call them cartridges because when you put it on your shelf, it kind of looks like a cartridge and the system is meant to look like a, a video game system. I dig that design. And all three of the games are fun. Uh, they're, they're very easy to teach and very accessible. Yeah, I, I think we're both in agreement that the from a design perspective, this game scored big both in concept and quality. I, the first time I got one of those controllers in my hand, I oh, was yeah. shocked at... at I, I knew it was a solid thing. I'd seen the unboxing, I'd, I, and I, I knew it was a, a decent piece, but it still, it felt really good. I mean, they're not quite yeah. as thick as a, as an old Nintendo controller, but they're no, but... that far off. I mean, it's it's a better sol piece of solid gear than you'd expect. Now, the three games that come in the base game are all very easy to teach, and the reason for that is they are really simple. And here's where the 8-bit box is going to fall down for some people, mostly my gaming group, to be honest. They're quick and simple family weight games. Uh, my kids could play most of these. They're pretty much at the level of being party games. They're just not quite as silly, right? You're not going to get irrelevant. There's, there's no adult jokes are going to come into it, but they're as close to party games as you can get. They're over and done in less than an hour. They don't have a lot of depth to them, the, especially the like the, the Pac-Man Pixoid, like 10 minutes max to play around to that. It, it makes them great for playing with new gamers and great for a casual game night, beer and pretzels game night, where you're all about socializing and you happen to be playing a game. But I got to say, they're not that interesting to gamers who like anything with a little bit of meat on it. Yeah, well, hobby gamers might not take to them. These could be a 
fun family game to have and something kids of a certain age could play with their friends easily enough. Yeah, totally fair. Like, uh, for me, I found it to be disappointingly light. I was hoping for a bit more crunch, especially there's three games, right? We talked about how they're different lengths. They're all pretty dang light. Like, if it would have been nice to have one heavier game in the box, that would have been kind of nice. Like, yeah, I expect a quick filler. Like, if I'm getting three games out of this thing, show me the quick filler. Show me the party game, but I didn't expect all three to be that light quick filler game. I would have liked to have seen different weights in there. Yeah, and while the time play varied, the weight really didn't. Yeah, not really. Now, for those of you looking to potentially pick up a copy, uh, the decision should be made based on what you're looking for. If you want light, fun, quick to pick up, play with your your, your video gamer friends to show them, hey, here's a cool board game. Look, we'll play Pac-Man. Or, hey, it's New Year's Eve. We're going to have a bunch of people over and have some drinks, and we're going to play some light games. Great. Perfect. Pick this up. Check it out. You're probably going to have a lot of fun with this, especially if you like the classic video games, if you like the retro thing. If you're looking for, wow, this isn't you, but if you remember playing, you know, stand-up arcade games, this could be pretty cool. But if you're into non-beer and pretzel games and don't enjoy party games or games that are that light, this is probably not for you, at least with the games that are currently released for it. Yeah, it should be noted that, while as we mentioned earlier, they only ever put out one other game for this. Mm -hmm. So it's questionable if this game is going to have yeah. ongoing support from Yellow or if they've done what they wanted and it's in the fans' uh, hands now. That being yeah. said, this is actually an open enough system with enough components in that it's original true. box that creative types could certainly manage to get some of their own fun 8-bit memories implemented as games. Actually, to be honest, it might. If you are a developer, a game publisher, or not a publisher, but if you're an indie game designer, it might be worth picking this up just for the bits. Yep. Like those controllers could be used for so many different hidden movement games. Absolutely. And and just a ton of cubes. Again, I didn't want to get into the components, but there are a ton of cubes in this game. There are some dice with some really unique um, sides on them, we'll call it, like the, the distributions. They're all D6s, but only one goes one to six. Like, yeah, I could definitely see it. And to be honest, it's probably out there. I, I didn't check Board Game Geek, but I would not be surprised if there is fan support for this game already out there. Yep. Well, for a more in-depth look at the 8-bit box, including some thoughts on the double rumble cartridge based on the side-scrolling beat-em-ups like Double Dragon, check out Mo's written review over at tabletopbellhop.com. Just click on Reviews.